Jonathan and 2.2a. I have one request from Heidi Larson uh, to discuss the LMA. Um, Good evening. No, you're fine. Sex education. As a parent of high school students and as an elected member of the school board, it's a topic that I want to sure, make sure is addressed appropriately and with the utmost transparency. At last month's school board meeting, I asked Dr. Hill for an update on the National Sex Education Standards Curriculum Committee that we created in April after the board voted to adopt the national standard. At that time, President Skinmo stated I could not ask for an update because it violated Robert's rules. That ruling was inaccurate. According to the policy 2.22 school board meeting procedure, items not on the agenda can still be addressed. And frankly, I was shocked when this happened. I was even more frustrated when I later learned that I could have asked the question in the unfinished business section of the meeting. So that's so, sorry. so the best I could do at the time was to publicly ask for the committee update to be added to the meeting. On Tuesday, October 4th, I followed the board policy 2.22 and emailed President Skidmore and Superintendent Condon, Mr. Hedges and Mr. Kettle, who both expressed an interest in an update, <coughs> to officially request to add the Federal Sex Education Committee and an update to the list of each tonight's agenda. On Wednesday, the next day, October 5th, President Skidmore texted me to ask if I could have a phone conference with her and Mr. Condon. In the text message, she also stated that my email violated the Open Meetings Act, which is the OMA. I was and am still puzzled with this response. Clearly, I understand that we cannot discuss board matters, nor could we interact vote or via email or in person with three or more board emails. My email simply was to request an agenda item, two of them for tonight. Obviously, I was deeply troubled by her accusation, so I immediately asked for clarification, specifically which section of the act did I violate? I believe I'm entitled for it to be in writing. As of tonight, I have not received an answer. With any healthy board, there is going to be differing opinions. My job is to represent the parents and the students of this district. My goal is simply to gather information that I can make informed votes until our community has the opportunity to engage in this process. I would never openly and violate the OMA. I feel like my integrity was called into question, and I'm extremely disappointed by the lack of communication about this process. So tonight, I'm asking for a legal opinion on record of the alleged OMA violation in question from our district attorney, Mr. Brandon Wright. I am entitled to clarification in writing, stating what the violation is, if any. I'm requesting that Mr. Wright offer an opinion with sources and an authority so that we can all understand how to avoid the same situation in our future. In conclusion, one, I request for transparency at the National Sex Education Curriculum Standards Committee for our parents and our students. Number two, my character and integrity were called unduly into question last Wednesday. Number three, I request the school district lawyer to rule on the alleged OMA violation. And four, I will not be silenced or bullied. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd just like to address that, number one, Heidi, we have talked multiple times in emails during the past week. I to explain to you that we were discussing agriculture curriculum. Sex ed curriculum was not on the list. I also told you at that time that I have talked to two people from IASD, and we did get some information from Brandon Wright that I could have addressed it under new business. I told you I made a mistake. I told you that I learned from it. So sitting here acting like you don't know that is very shocking to me because we had that conversation. Um, as far as the OMA, you asked for a copy of the OMA, I gave it to you. I am not a lawyer and I refuse to translate legal terms to you because I don't understand all of that. I do understand that you did violate the Open Meetings Act by sending an email to three board members plus our superintendent. That constitutes a form. Was it school business? Yes. When you're asking for an item to be placed on the agenda, that is school business. So that was the violation. And as far as being bullied, Heidi has done nothing but bully me the past few weeks. Very shockingly. Very upsetting. Um, so you, in turn, were the bully. And I just want to say, we will get rid of like he already gave one opinion. That since you wanted in writing, we will have him do that. I sent it to you. I said, read this. 
I can I will not translate. I will not put in writing a lawyer's information. You sent me an email with Brandon Wright's opinion. No, I did not send you an email. I told you that Brandon Wright said that it was a violation. I never sent you an email saying that his opinion was that. I told you that I didn't give you a written opinion from Brandon. I told you that in discussion with him that he said stated. And there are several board members here that have agreed that it is a very strong violation of the Open Meetings Act. Had you gone to any workshops or in service, anything, you would learn what a board member's responsibility is. You would learn about Open Meetings Act. You would understand all of that. Um, so like I said, I, I didn't threaten you or harass you. I can't remember all the terms you used on the phone that day. But um, it was a learning thing. I was hoping, I was taking the high road trying to use it. In fact, my words to were, this is a learning experience to know what the violations are and what the Open Meetings Act is. But you refuse to listen to me whatsoever. Okay, so let's, let's revisit the phone call Wednesday. Wednesday, you told me to talk to Dale Ryder, who wrote the Open Meetings Act. You told me you called Springfield. And then when I asked you, you sent me the act in a text message. And I said, if I'm being accused, I would like to know specifically. This isn't a violation that is important. You could have a misdemeanor. This is nothing silly to accuse somebody of. I am in multiple boards across the state. I understand what the Open Open Meetings Act is. And so, so when I said to you, when you consulted with multiple people, simply state what I did to violate the Open Meetings Act and give it to me in writing. Then you asked when I said, I don't think it's a violation to request agenda items. And you said, how do you know that? I said, I consulted my lawyer. And, then, and you said, then I shouldn't be on the phone. And I said, as the accused, I would like, in writing, from the president of the school board who made the accusation to follow up with an email with information on what I did in correct. Texting me the entire act is not following up. It is not what I expect, nor do I should be entitled to. I sent you an email with the Open Meetings Act also when you asked for that. I sent you a copy of the Open Meetings Act through an email. That's what you But not the specific violation. No, because right. I am not going to be, be the lawyer for you. You said you have a lawyer. Then ask him. But we will get Brandon Wright's opinion um, and see what he has to say. But it definitely was a violation. It says in there that you are not to have more than a form of board members together to discuss school business. And that says through email, phone, what it was so, not a discussion. It was a request. It's the antecedent to a board meeting to ask for agenda items to be placed. There was no interaction, there was no discussion, and there was absolutely no voting. So if there is a violation that you're accusing me of, I have the right to have in an email stated what it is that I specifically did wrong. That's what I'm asking from you. Yeah, I'm not asking you to be a lawyer. You contacted three different people who all gave you legal they're advice. Not, they're not lawyers. They did not give you legal advice. Can I help you? Yes. Um, hi, can I help? Well, sure. Specifics? Okay. Um, in order for there to be a violation of the Open Meetings Act, you need three things. There needs to be a meeting. There needs to be a discussion of the public's business at that meeting. And there could not have been any notice of the meeting. Section 102 of the Open Meetings Act states that a meeting includes a gathering, whether in person or by video or audio conference, telephone call, electronic means, such as without limitation, electronic email. So the plain wording of the statute makes it clear that an email that discusses public business is a meeting. So it qualifies as a meeting. Discussion of an agenda item is, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it takes a lawyer to conclude that a discussion of, or even raising a question, or asking that agenda items be put on the agenda, or certain items be put on the agenda, is the public's business. It, it clearly is. The third is that there was no notice given, and obviously there wasn't any no public notice given of your email. I mean, we talk about this. I think you're going to get the same conclusion from. Lawyers who are more of an expert in the Open Meetings Act than I am, but it meets the elements. I mean, okay. no one's rushing to the state's attorney's office here, but I mean, it meets the elements. Okay. 
so so what I asked was that what is the I asked in the meeting with you, Tim and Michelle, I said, let's get Brandon Wright's opinion. Like and you said it's not worth a billable hour to Brandon to call him. And I said, Well, I would like to know. I think any person who's being accused of violating something would like to know. And if it is as clear as this, then it would simply take a phone call to Brandon and email me that. I would like to have the information on what I violated specifically. Okay, we've asked that several times tonight. We will have Brandon do that. Um, I'm not sure what his schedule is. <coughs> Tomorrow could be another day. I can't say what his schedule is. So that will be addressed. But I think you've heard from Gail that we tried to explain and it's not going to be good enough for this. We will get Brandon's opinion and make sure you have that. Can I Is this a healthy school board? <laughs> can, I, can I clarify something? We did not vote. We did not go to adopt the federal policy. What we did was we postponed it and we created the committee. And I just want to be very clear about that. We did not take any action to adopt anything new as it relates to sex of education. We postponed it to have a committee to develop what we want the curriculum to be. I just want to be very clear about what this board did and did not do. This is twice that it's been said that we voted to adopt it and we did not. I think it's just been confusing for people who attend regular meetings that they're interrupting because people are very interested. I just want to clarify what we did and did not do. We did not adopt to do anything. We created a committee for those purposes. So there's been no change to the education. <coughs> I'm sorry, so what did you say? I, couldn't hear you. I just said that I just, I'm curious of the health of the school board. I have, Having a healthy debate here, and, uh, well, down and open per, in front of everybody. Uh, seems per, to me perhaps, that's the way bodies I mean, like perhaps, to work. It just, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I just, it just seemed like, I don't know. There's a, I, to me, I just pick up underlying um, animosity, and I don't know. I'm not taking sides on either, either way. I'm just saying there's this underlying animosity. It seems to me, as a citizen, a, vo a voter. And, and, and I could be completely wrong, but I just, I've seen a lot of, this has been a hell of a year, so. Right. And sir, we have tried to work as a team, in 30 years I've never had this much animosity. So, so you admit that this, this is an unhealthy it, school it, board then? No, it's not an unhealthy school board. We have one member who does not want to agree with what the rules of the past are. <laughs> so it's not an unhealthy school board. We have one member. So the fact that I have for information on an activation that may be a test, which I think is completely unprofessional, but I didn't even go there, okay? Second of all, because I asked for transparency, the two items I asked on the agenda, the wording is not this. That is not the word. I understand we talked in about how we can fit it. So I find that there are times that I'm not getting the information I need. And so, yes, I'm going to continue to ask questions. I'm going to continue to email. I'm going to continue to find out the information that I need as a board member. I'm sorry that that feels like I'm resistant and not a team player. I'm simply asking questions that constituents have, that I have, and I agree. I think this whole sexual education system standard is confusing. The entire process is. It's been four months. And as a board member, I would ask, who's on the committee? Do you know how ignorant that makes me feel? I said, I have no idea who's on the committee that we set four months ago. I don't know what board members on there. I don't know who in the community's on there. We said it would be parents, a board member, and teachers. But I don't have that information. So I am sorry that I ask a lot of questions as a new board member, but I want to know that information, which is why I put the list down. People ask me questions after the Rotary presentation, and I, I couldn't answer some of the questions. So what do I do? I ask to put it on the agenda so I can get questions answered. And how do I do that? I do that in a public forum so that people who are watching, people who are here, get informed. That is the best way that we can be transparent and share information, which was my number one reason for wanting to be here. Better communication, more transparency. But that is perceived as that I'm being difficult or I'm not a team player. I think that's the way you go about it, Heidi. Yes, but we can two things. One, in June, no, July. There was an update to the list that Joe was Dr. Hill shared with us what the enrollment was for each program, each floor. And we did ask questions and you clarified which schools and which programs had enrollment at that time. In fact, I remember you saying that several students had to withdraw because they couldn't pay for it. So we did have an update. And as it relates to a process, it is transparent and it's transparent because there's a particular way that we do things. 
I get it that people will ask us in the community questions about what is happening in this district, but we must remember that this board is not the voice or the face of this district. We are here to support this administration and this superintendent. So if I don't have an answer to the question, oh, 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 absolutely not. Oh, Yes, ma'am. I would just like to add that that is not your job. Your job is to represent the people and you're yes. supposed to listen to the people. You are there to help. I didn't say that. It's my turn. I didn't say you didn't listen. You just said your job was to support the administration. You said you were there to support the administration, what they wanted. You're here to support us and what the community and the public wants. The job of the superintendent is to do what the board says and the board is <coughs> the interest of the public. That's the way it goes. And your job should be the best interest of the children. So then it's children first, <laughs> children first, then school board, the superintendent and the administration do what you guys tell him to do, which is based on public. That's how it goes, not the other way around. I understand what you're Thank you. Well, we're not sure that you do. That's not <laughs> you what you didn't said. say that. That's, what, that's all we're going on. That's all. Okay. That's many times. We've wasted enough time on this, but I do want to say Please people this. don't understand what the role of a school board member is. Explain it. Hire the superintendent and we make sure policies are being followed. We are not here to micromanage every detail that they do. We are here for the children. Yes, ma'am. I was on a school board for eight years. I was on very fantastically, uh, it was a school board that did a lot of work. We got along great, we worked together. The people knew their places, they knew, and we are here for the students, and the, you're, you're getting it backwards. And what you just said was also backwards. So you are there, no, you said. I, uh, well, it's, it's simple enough, you're the board. The administration works for you. Yeah. Simple, that's it. It's, it's not that you're there to support them or do what they ask. The, the administration works specifically for the board. That's why you're elected. Yes. You set policy, yes. they enforce the policy. That's perfect. Right. And we vote you in to do that. And we set the policy, and their job, like you said, is to enforce it. That, that's not that's what was communicated. <laughs> not at all. And that's what I just said. So if you get your story straight. Right. And I'm not going to debate what I said. <laughs> okay, if we could get move on and Mrs. Larson, are you through with your comments? Yes, I will give you a copy of my um, statement so that it can be in the next piece. And we will make sure that we get something from Brandon. I don't know when, it's fine, because we have we don't have a schedule. Are there any non agenda other non agenda visitors who wish to speak? Moving on to consent agenda for board action, item 